This is the first video in a series about Scotch yoke mechanisms and other rotary to linear motion mechanisms. I'll start by taking a look at this one. This first one is called a Scotch yoke mechanism and it's also known as a slotted link mechanism and it converts rotary motion to linear motion. There's this main wheel that rotates about its center axis. There's a pin in the wheel offset from the center that moves in this slotted link or slider and these arms on either side are connected to the slider. As the wheel is rotated the pin moves through the slider moving it back and forth converting this rotary motion to reciprocating linear motion. This next one also has a wheel that rotates. However, this one is mounted so the pivot point is offset or eccentric from the center. And the wheel itself moves through the slider, moving the slider and arms back and forth. This is another scotch yoke mechanism. It also has a wheel that rotates about the center axis. And it has a pin that's offset from the center. There's also a slider, but a portion of this slider is concentric with the wheel. So as the pin moves through this part of the slider from here to here, there's no lateral movement in the arm. This is called dwell. There's dwell on this end as it doesn't move. As the wheel rotates and the pin moves to the other side, there is lateral mo motion as it moves the slider back. And then again on this end, there's the pause as it goes through this concentric part of the slider. On this one, you can see the wheel has been modified. It has a profile on it instead of being round. And this is called a cam. On either side of this cam, mounted into the arm, are these cam followers. And they follow the profile of the cam as it turns. And you can see on this side, this part of the profile is concentric to the center axis. So as it rotates through this part, there's no movement. And then it slides to the other side and again on this side there is no movement. So there is dwell on both ends of this one. On this one, the wheel has been replaced with this crank, similar to a journal on a crankshaft. And there are two sliders on this one, one horizontal and one vertical. And the pin and the crank move through them simultaneously, moving them horizontally and vertically. This one is based on a rack and pinion system. You can see the rack here along the bottom. And here's the pinion. 
it's been modified to only use this portion and a slotted link has been added to this end and it pivots about the center axis of the pinion. There's also the wheel that rotates about its center axis and there's the offset pin that slides in the slider. As it slides through here, rotating the pinion, it moves the rack back and forth. On this end, since the pin is farther away from the center axis of the pinion, the rack moves slowly. But on this end where it's closer, the rack moves quicker. So it moves slowly in one direction and rapidly returns in the other. This one uses a star wheel that has three points on it. And the slider has a step on the bottom and a step on the top. As the star wheel is rotated, the tip of the star hits on this step in the slider, pushing it in one direction. Once it's past that step, the star on the other side makes contact, pushing it in the other direction. This one uses a pair of spur gears. This spur gear has an offset pin in it that's connected to a crank in the back. And this spur gear has an offset pin that's connected to this slider here. The two gears have a link attached to the center of them holding them together. So as it spins it pivots about this point in this gear, pulling the gears in this direction, and this pin is moving the slider back and forth on these rods. This one also uses a cam profile and cam followers to follow this profile as it moves. And this cam is wrapped around this cylinder. So as the cylinder is rotated, see the cam moves back and forth, moving this shaft back and forth. That's the last mechanism in part one of this series.